I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda. Charlie? Under the Finance Subcommittee report, we need to do a vote action on salary account adjustments. Are there any others? The next item on the agenda is approval of October 10th school board minutes. Charlie? Under item 6B, school board committee, I believe it was Connie Goldman and yourself who reported on that meeting. Yes, thank you. And I'm hoping that you will also report tonight on that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring my notes, but I, I, I can if you want. And can. Um, are there any other changes? Seeing none, the school board minutes are accepted. The next item is comments by high school and middle school representatives. I do not see. Do I have any high school reps? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, we came here today with the report cards are coming out tomorrow for the high school and our first dance is this Friday and it's sponsored by the seniors. It's going to be from 8 to 11. We're hoping for a good turnout for that. And the Cape Insight will be coming out this week or next week. Um, this past week we started um, a new volunteer program and it's Mr. Crosby, the Spanish teacher, is heading it up and it's called the Student Services Program and it's trying to get kids um, involved in volunteering for all different kinds of activities like big, big brother, big sister, or donating food and toys. And so far we've had a pretty good turnout. About 40 kids showed up to the meeting and everyone seems pretty enthusiastic about it. So Mr. Crosby's excited. And um, also we, so, um, we've had the Needy Family Project, which is our fifth year of doing it. And each class has a family that they are kind of adopted and each person in the grade brings in an item of food and those, the food items will be due Friday. Great, thank you. Any questions or comments, Charlie? I would just like to congratulate all our teams, all our sports teams this year with fall sports. They all did exceptionally well and congratulate the boys soccer for being state champs, the girls um, cross country for being state champs and the uh, boys cross country for coming in third. Great. Thank you, Charlie. And do we have a middle school rep? Okay, I'm going to start out with the fun things. We've had a successful dance and a successful social. <coughs> Not only was the behavior good and the rules were followed, but everyone had a really great time at both. The next dance is on December 15th. Um, we've had a couple of student council meetings so far and we're kind of getting used to it for the new people. And the, some of the issues that have come up are fundraisers, because that's always a problem. Um, we're not doing Magazine Drive or the Humanities Sale this year because it's kind of, you know, you can't do Humanities every year because, you know, you can't always have those. But we're doing a sweatshirt sale and we'll be getting the form so they can be ordered for the holidays. The student council meetings this year have been pretty successful and we've been very quick to solve problems like the break times and the school rules. Chiwanki has been a big issue so far as well. The sixth grade hasn't raised as much money in the past, as in the past years because they're a smaller class and Chiwanki has also raised the prices. So there's been a debate on whether or not they'll go this year. Parents have been encouraged to call the school with their opinions and any feelings regarding this. There is going to be a food drive entitled the Mayflower Event and this, this year to gather non-perishable foods for the Thanksgiving season to give to family in need. It's going to be competition between the grades to see who can raise the most food. The winter concert is on December 19th. It will have the 7th and 8th grade band and chorus, 6th grade band, 5th and 6th grade chorus, and the sign chorus. Um, the boys' basketball season starts this week with their first game on Wednesday and their first home game on Friday afternoon. We'll have a snack bar open in the lobby by the gym during every home game, and the student <coughs> council is going to run that. Um, there is going to be a yearbook this year. 
and the first meeting was on Monday afternoon. And I'd like to thank Mrs. Dubois, Mr. Perkins, and Mrs. Chapman in advance for their help on this. The seventh grade is having their annual trip to Boston Science Museum on November 13th, and that should be a success this year, I hope, as every year usually is. And we have a school newspaper underway, but we're uncertain when the first issue will be out. There will also be a computer club and a drama club starting pretty soon. So Great. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Charlie? Where, where do you hold your student council meetings? There's a conference room across from the office, and we always sit around a table. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to make sure Thank these you. new spaces are being used <laughs> by students besides <laughs> uh, um, the next item on the agenda is communications. I have one. Um, I got in the mail today conducting board meetings and a board leadership um, that I will pass around if any board members are interested. It is on December 9th. And um, the other communication that I had was um, we had a successful meeting with the first grade team and I wanted to offer to all the other departments and teams that school board members would love to sit down and have some informal talks with them. And that should be passed down through the buildings. And the last was that I would be attending the school um, law conference on Thursday. Gail? Yes. I received two um, calls from concerned people regarding the Pledge of Allegiance in the schools and called the different schools today and just wanted to report that the Pledge of Allegiance does take place in every classroom K through 8 every day in some way and there are flags on display in every classroom throughout our entire school K through 12. Keith? I've had the opportunity uh, to attend the last two uh, Cape Coalition meetings, uh, one in October and one in November. Uh, I just wanted to announce that the next meeting is December 13th at uh, 7.30. I'm not sure if the meeting's in at, at uh, the community center or, or at the high school. Um, I don't know where, where that's going to be. Uh, you can contact Jody Sadloff uh, to find out exactly where that meeting is going to be. Uh, there's some issues involved with the Cape Coalition that I think we as a board are going to have to start uh, looking at uh, specifically there's the town and the Cape Coalition has, has come up or been awarded the community liaison officer. And uh, it's certainly going to have a, a lot of, of input and, and interaction with our students. And I, I think just as a board, we need to be involved with the, the definition of, of, that, uh, of that job and so forth, which the Cape Coalition is undertaking right now. Anne? Well, I, ha I have something, but I'd also like to respond to Keith just to let you know that Jack Nichols, the liaison officer, will be attending the next policy um, subcommittee meeting because we're going to be talking about weapons in the school and locker searches and that kind of issues. And so we'll also be talking to him informally about that. And anybody, obviously, on the board or the public are welcome to attend that meeting. So that's a first step anyway. Um, my other uh, communication was that uh, last Wednesday I spent most of the day at the high school. Rick DeFusco was nice enough to set up a schedule for me. Um, and I'd just like to thank the teachers um, who allowed me to sit in on their classes. Joyce Bell, Sally Martin, Jeff Rosenblum, Mary Hart, Richard Roethlisberger, and Charlotte Hanna. It was a great experience. There's uh, exciting stuff going on in all those classes. I thought the kids were wonderful. I, I felt sorry for one particular student, though, who I apparently had her schedule. I don't know if Rick set it up that way, but everywhere I, everywhere I went, there's this poor girl who must have thought she had a shadow for the day. But it was a great experience, and, and Rick had said that any other board members who want to do that should, and I really encourage you to do it. It was a great day. A lot of fun. Charlie? And on December 7th, I will be representing the board at the Portland Arts Technology High School budget hearing. Anything? Very good. My turn. <laughs> certainly want to echo um, the congratulations that have already been expressed for our sports teams. They've really been terrific. And, and I agree with Charlie that all of them should be congratulated, obviously, with our two state champion 
teams, boys soccer and girls cross country, those are, are really special. Also want to congratulate the students um, who are the five National Merit semifinalists, uh, Joy Cranshaw, Jess Brakely, Jen Cannell, Amanda Roberts, and Bethany Boardman. Uh, for the, this size high school, to have five uh, national semifinalists is really pretty good. And I think we ought to uh, not only congratulate the youngsters themselves, but also, um, in a sense, it is um, parents and teachers who share in those moments. A couple of other things I would like to note. Um, Gail Schmader, who is uh, our volunteer coordinator, has been invited to be a guest lecturer at the New England College speaking to teachers in training uh, regarding the use of volunteers. I included in your packet a um, summary that I received from the state on the statewide survey on drug and alcohol abuse, um, which looks depressingly, I'm afraid, familiar. But um, as we move forward with the concept of a community um, uh, liaison and the discussions you'll be having with the coalition and at the policy level, I thought you certainly needed to see that. Also, uh, would want to note that Diane Brakely will be working uh, three hours on Wednesday evenings at the high school library. This is a new attempt this year to not only keep the library open, but also to have somebody available as a consultant or to help out. And I think that's a, a real positive move. I uh, also included in your packet a letter, which for the benefit of those people who don't get packets, um, I really feel I should read um, from a fifth grade student. Dear school board, I am a fifth grader in Mrs. Parker's homeroom class. Thank you for the new school. It was a big job and I really appreciate all you have done. Some things I notice every day are cleaner bathrooms and the water fountains and the sinks in the room. The colors in the new building are pleasing. I also like the pattern on the floors. Um, mine has gotten, let's see. We, we got brand new tables. Oh, thank you. We got brand new tables <laughs> in the cafetorium today and new computers are being installed as I write this letter. Amazing, two exclamation points. It's 9.50 on a school night, so I have to go to bed. Um, again, my copy has gotten washed up. My mom says. My mom says, since I'm not creating the Declaration of Independence, I do have to stop writing. <laughs> Thanks again, Guy E. And uh, says, P.S., my mom wants to thank you too, and I apologize for having a copy where I didn't quite get some of those words. Um, thank you, Guy, for writing to us. And uh, one of the things that I also wanted to pass along, um, we will be trying to get as many of these out as possible. And in the coalition, uh, the um, Cape Courier coming out shortly, this will be uh, present. What it says is we're ready to celebrate. Please plan to attend. The Pond Cove and Cape Elizabeth Middle School Community Wide Open House, Sunday, December 10th, 2 to 5 p.m. Everyone is invited, so ask a friend or a neighbor. Um, and I actually, our board member Gail Dransfield is in charge of that. Um, we will be getting out separate invitations as well as really trying to put these in visible places. Um, and we're still working on the exact agenda. But among other things, we will be including. Um, a brief or at least uh, short ceremony. Um, I don't know if that's a, a formal dedication or not because we haven't changed any names and essentially the schools are what they, in the same place where they were, but we think they really are improved and different. Um, and we will be giving some guided tours uh, for people who would like to have a few things pointed out. I'm sure my compatriot Sue Weatherby will help in all of that. Um, and uh, more details will be forthcoming, but just please mark your calendar Sunday, December 10th, 2 to 5. We're particularly interested in bringing people in who have no children in the school at this time, who might not be otherwise uh, coming into the building. So we would really hope that we get uh, a, a good turnout. Anything you want to add to that, Gail? No, I think you have it all. Well, um, so I have my final communication, and I want to take a couple of minutes on this one. Uh, we have a letter from Connie Brown who is telling us that she is intending to retire from her position effective as of 
Friday, December 29, 1995. Um, many, many people, certainly all the administrators, I believe all the teachers, because uh, whenever they apply for a position, the papers have gone to Connie directly. Uh, she has made calls, so she has definitely touched just about everybody in the system, and that certainly includes everybody sitting at this table. Um, speaking for myself, um, I'm going <laughs> to certainly have a hard time getting along. It's been the office of the two Connies. We, uh, sometimes we play games with that, but uh, you're not sure who you're talking to. Um, I just want to say very publicly how much I have enjoyed working with Connie, how much I deeply appreciate um, her sense of quality, her sense of reaching out to people. She always has time uh, to answer the phone call, to go the extra mile, to, to look up something for somebody. I deeply appreciate all that she has given to the system and to me. Thank you. You will be missed. You will be sincerely missed by myself and all of the board, I'm sure, for all of the hard work you do for all of us. Thank you, Connie. It is kind of a thankless job. <laughs> Charlie. As one, as one board member who actually has worked with Connie longer than any other on the board, and so worked with her through the transition of superintendents, she was amazing. And she has been a very valuable resource both at the year I served as chair and as a board member the last seven years. Carla? I actually had something else to comment on also, but <laughs> I will say first that I think that we're going to realize how much we've come to depend on you for so many details. I think we almost sort of take a lot of what you do for granted, and I think that mm. we're really going to miss that. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to comment on in, in your packet, um, relative to the substance abuse report that you alluded to, a while back in those newsletters that we get from the School Boards Association, there was a school in Hawaii that I thought had a terrific idea that I think might work well in our kind of town where we have one elementary, one middle, one high school, and a pretty stable population where a lot of people stay in the town. And what this school did is they had children write to their future selves explaining why they want to remain drug free. The letters are placed in folders to be opened when the students are in high school. And I think that's a really excellent idea because remembering back to the drug questionnaire last year, a lot of the elementary school age children did say they would never use drugs and they had all kinds of reasons. And then we saw the levels increase as kids got older. And I, that just kind of caught my eye, something that might work well in this kind of community and be something to think about. Thanks, Carla. Ann? I just wanted to follow up with Connie, too. The, the, one thing I didn't hear mentioned was her incredible sense of humor <laughs> and her ability to stay cheerful and be nice to everybody no matter how <laughs> nasty people are. And people can be pretty nasty. Thank you. We will miss you. <laughs> she does have a good sense of mm. humor. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> the next item on the agenda is. Um, oh, Connie's going to oh, you're going to speak? Okay. Yeah, I can say something now, I guess. After seven years, I can say thank you very much. I've enjoyed a wonderful time here. And um, I'm only retiring because, uh, you know, it's time. <laughs> but I've loved every minute of it and everyone here. Um, <clears throat> I've told Connie many times I, I really, really admire all the teachers and all the administrators, the board, everyone in the school system. I wish every single person in Cape Elizabeth would know how fortunate they are to have the kind of people that are in this town teaching our children. They're wonderful. I love them all. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the next item is superintendent's report. Connie? And the first item is the middle school and high school athletic reports. So we do have them in the packet summaries. Um, do we start with the high school? Keith, are you going to? In case. We appreciate your making the time to come in here and. I'm basically here to try to answer uh, any questions you might have. Uh, sorry that there isn't a narrative I usually have with it. But, uh, Actually, I haven't had the time to do it, so I apologize for that. <laughs> well, uh, I can try to answer any questions that any of you uh, 
may have pertaining to it. Anne? Um, Keith, one thing that we've asked for in the past, and I'm not sure we've ever actually gotten it, but I'll ask again, is some kind of accounting of the um, amount of money that comes into the athletic program from the booster, the various booster clubs, and also um, the, the money from the gate, you know, for soccer games, basketball games, and that kind of thing, and where, where that falls into the into the mix here. Okay. And also somebody, somebody has asked me about the status of um, girls lacrosse. Is there a girls lacrosse team this spring? Oh, it'll be a, a, a club team. A yes. club, okay. Yeah. Is that included in that lacrosse figure? No, this, th these are all figures from last year. Oh, okay. From, the, from monies that was spent last year. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll try to get that information. Um, uh, Rick and I are going to be at the budget. Uh, I mean, at a school board workshop on the 28th, and I'll get that information for you okay. at that time. Okay. Great. Thanks. Are there other questions, Charlie? The next time you go into your computer, you'll need to change your house manager. Correct. Thank you, <laughs> Charlie, for reminding me about that. We want to make sure that when that person retires, they get the uh, benefit of their uh, service. I agree. <laughs> Keith? I just want to mention on your uh, spreadsheet uh, where we have cost per student. Mm -hmm. as average cost per student for all sports is 296. Um, I think the hockey figure throws that out of whack as to what the. I, I, somehow, I don't know if there's a way to weigh that number where most of the cost per students are hovering right around 200 to $225. Right, that would be true, yeah. I mean, I, I very easily could uh, could do it without that sport in there, to, uh, so you'd have a, an idea of what it is without that one, yeah. Yeah, because I just think it throws it out of whack because yep. all of a sudden we have one that's over 700 per student. Do you know off the top of your head, Keith, how much of the hockey boosters covers for the hockey? Well, in addition to the money that we spend, I, they raise between five and seven thousand dollars themselves. The this program. is just the money we spend, so that's Correct. not the true cost of the hockey program. Yep. That's the money that the, the school spends. Mm. Well, could, I, could I just ask one more thing? Maybe could we just clarify for the public's interest what topics regarding the athletic program we'll talk about at the workshop? That would be great. But, Keith, would you mind addressing that? Not what? at all. What uh, Rick and I talked with Connie a week or so ago, actually at one of the times they're running into some problems at the middle school, uh, we met with her down there, but um, I, I'm very concerned about what is going to happen pertaining to the numbers of kids that we have coming to the high school next year. Uh, we're, we're just, if you take field hockey, for example, we had 43 girls on the team this year, of that only four of them were seniors. We have 39 coming back. There are 21 eighth graders coming to the high school next year who interest in playing field hockey. So, you know, we're talking 60, 60 kids there. We're going to have similar things in, in boys' soccer and girls' soccer, girls' basketball as well. And I, and, uh, I want to discuss with the school board, you know, what, what we're going to do with the, uh, with the influx of kids that we have coming to the high school interested in, uh, in athletics. That's a, and it's going to be something we're going to have to really examine, especially with upcoming budgets. It is. Thank you. Okay. Are there other questions? Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Um, we'll see you on the 28th. And we have a middle school report. I just want to publicly apologize to Keith for giving him so many numbers of, of athletes coming through. <laughs> Obviously, they must enjoy what we're offering them. <coughs> so I'm here just to answer any questions that you might have on our spreadsheet that we worked up for you. Yeah, um, Carla? Is all the middle school competition interscholastic? Do yes. Do anything here that's strictly intramural? Nothing is intramural. Okay, so even the... Even the B teams and the mm -hmm. seventh grade teams are interscholastic. That's correct. Yeah. So, 
Andy, the yes. B teams, are they just because the numbers are so high? The numbers are so high that we form a, a, another team. And a lot of the other, a few of the other communities also have that. So we travel to the other communities to play against them. It's, it's almost like a, a team of, of kids that need a little more fundamental work. So we base that club or that team as a fundamentals, and we really work on the basics with them. And then we go out, we, we play against, uh, compete against other communities. So these teams are leveled. They're not just mixed up because of the number. That's, yes. But they aren't leveled according to people's abilities. It's just the numbers, when we have excess of numbers of kids. Like in basketball, we had uh, 20, I think, believe it was 22, 24 eighth graders come out this year, and this, about the same numbers as seventh graders. And when uh, you just, really, it's very difficult to work with those numbers. So then we work them down to between 12 and 14, and then we have about 20 of the kids on, on the B team this year. But will the, let's say the A team and the B team, mm -hmm. will they each play the same number of competitions, or does Actually, one this year, I think the B team will be playing more because there are more communities out there that want to play this uh, type of program, which is the first year in a, a few years that uh, I'll be able to get them about 14 games this year. Okay. How do you decide who goes on the B team again? It's, it's, it's like a tryout. They have a tryout, and the kids who can benefit more by an instructional, a very basic, working on the basic skills uh, would be on the B team. And the people who we can kind of move along and give them more advanced skills would be on the A team. So it is a level team. It, it's, you know, we, we don't like to cut people because then the kid doesn't have an, the opportunity to continue in a sport that they may love. So we offer them this ability, this, this opportunity to be able to play. In swimming, and I could have asked this for the high school too, mm -hmm. Do the boys and girls practice at the same time? Yes, they do. And are the meets at the same time? Yes. Okay. They are in the boys. I mean, in the middle school. In the high school, they have separate practices. Separate, separate meets also? Mm -hmm. Well, no, the, the boys and girls meet together. Uh -huh. <coughs> they have the meets together. It take right. a long time. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> but separate practices. Yes, because we have so many girls. Right. We have like 45 girls in high school. Yeah. Charlie? You will need to add on your athletic report the assistant athletic director and salary, because Keith uses it on his. Okay. And the other thing that I would ask of both of you is to put the number of coaching positions by each sport. If you could add that to your spreadsheets, that would be very helpful. I believe you asked me to do that last year, and that's why instead of boys soccer, I put seventh and eighth. Uh, I think if you just add one more line to your spreadsheet of the number of positions for that particular sport. Ann? Hi, Ann. Hi, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> at, at, are, are you going to be at the workshop on the 20th yes, also? Yes, Yeah. So what middle school issues will we be discussing? Um, I, Nancy and I are going to be sitting down on Friday to go over a lot of the things that I believe that Connie and Nancy have talked about, some issues that that we can talk about. One of the things is, is the opportunities that this community has um, for kids. Uh, in, in the fall, maybe there are so many other things that, that kids have an opportunity to do. So we'll be uh, brainstorming in, in those lines. And just, again, for the public interest, might we be talking about whether there should be a cup policy or not having expansion teams and that kind I'm, of I'm sure that will be something that will be discussed. Okay. I think it should be discussed. Mm -hmm. Are there other questions? Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations, Coach, by the way. Yeah. True. Mm -hmm. um, moving on. The National Science Foundation grant I included in your packet uh, a summary of a recent exercise that a number of people um, attended visioning, ex uh, visioning exercise is a summary of an attempt at a vision statement as well as a lot of comments that remain as part of that development. Uh, we've also had a number of meetings from the within the building and also um, 
uh, with a core team with all three districts, Scarborough, South Portland, and uh, Cape Elizabeth um, involved. At this point, I would also point out that um, this uh, whole business about curriculum keeps surfacing the state, uh, has a couple of projects that will be part of this uh, uh, attempt to deal with a math and science and technology um, process, particularly if we are successful in getting the major grant, but even if we aren't, planning, as we've said many times, will be important to our work. The State Task Force on Learning Results um, was supposed to be out, I believe, this month, but it uh, isn't going to make it. It's probably, we understand, now coming out in some kind of final form in January. In the meantime, there is also something known as the Math and Science Frameworks, which are curriculum frameworks that the main alliance, the Math and Science Alliance, has been working on now for the last couple of years. Um, I've been trying to determine, and I'm sure we can, and we've seen some of our teachers have been working on those curriculum frameworks, and uh, Tom Eismeyer is the administrative representative on this work. So we are beginning to compile some of the results of what's been going on at the state level or through state agencies uh, to try to have a reasonably uniform expectation throughout the state on um, the uh, math and science strands. All of that work then has to form part of the background for this grant. So we, we're actually, I think we all feel a little overwhelmed at the moment because it, trying to, to understand what is not a finished piece at the state level, trying to understand what the math and science people are putting out, which I think is going to be more understandable than the other one, as well as dealing with some of the national uh, expectations. Um, it really, I think, is important to stress that we are a country without a national curriculum. And um, we have tended to think in our society that that's a good thing, that it gives more framework for creativity, individuality, and so forth. But I also have to point out that uh, it can be very confusing at the school level, and particularly in these efforts that we've been going through in the last few years, to draw the community in, ask people what, um, community members, uh, business people, various other people interested in, in our uh, young people's future, uh, well, what do you think would be a respectable set of learning goals? Um, it seems as if the, the lists are endless, and um, so I, I think we need to be realistic about what we're doing, but I'd be happy to answer any questions about that document. The other one I included in your packet is something I picked up in a conference from the National Science Foundation people, um, which I simply included as something for you to look at and to think about. It's, it, it's something uh, uh, an oncologist in Sweden became con concerned about what he felt were overwhelming environmental issues, um, and he uses the analogy that we have all kinds of scientists arguing about the leaves that are dying on a tree without really focusing on the fact that the trunk is also dying, if not dead. And he points out that in these complex situations that uh, people who know a lot about various aspects, this branch of science or that branch of science, etc., cetera, um, can quickly get into an argument about uh, side issues when in fact we need to press for agreement on the central issue. And I thought there was an analogy between that and what we're trying to do with curriculum consensus. So I just thought you would be interested in seeing that work. So questions? I would just like to comment, since I attended that visioning conference, um, at the fall conference of the Maine School Boards Association, I attended a clinic put on by the Casco Bay Alliance, which is those communities north of us who have formed a coalition of sorts to, to, to work towards working on certain things that they can do together. And then I attended this visioning conference and being together with community people, school people, parents, students from all three communities in a, in a day and a half of just conversations, brainstorming, um, I found that it was, it was a very exciting time, that people were talking, sharing, and, and we were doing it more on a, more on a, on a vision for, you know, for the future of, 
of science, <coughs> math, and technology. But I, I saw it more on a curriculum staff development stage compared to what's happening in the Casco Bay Alliance, which is more uh, nuts and bolts and that kind of thing that they're doing. So I see us moving ahead, even if, if for some reason we don't get this grant, I see this, this process continuing with these three, three communities. It was interesting, while we had some free time, to listen to teachers talking to teachers from other communities about exciting things that they are doing in their classrooms, in science in particular, hands-on kind of, of uh, experiments and um, learning tools. It, it, just that sharing alone. And if we can somehow pull together some kind of tri-community resource so that people have time to get together to talk about what's going on in science and math and technology, because I think technology is the thing that's going to pull all of this together. Uh, both in uh, telecommunication um, and in being able to provide um, crosstown classes in certain subject matters. And I, and I saw it at a very exciting time, and this is just at a, at a really grassroots um, kind of presentation um, workshop, and I saw it very exciting. Much more exciting, I was excited about the Casco Bay Alliance in that presentation, but more so because this is more curriculum and staff development directed. Thank you. Um, and I think the attempt to, uh, a, again, work across districts, uh, we're discovering that that is not necessarily automatic or easy. We, we're finding that we have some communication issues. We also um, are wrestling with exactly how do we give shape to this work. Um, it's hard enough when you're working in one district and you know everybody, but then all of a sudden you have others. But all of those kinds of things you're talking about are really energizing and important. Um, Tom is also a member of that core team. I don't know if he wants to add anything or not. I, I, I appreciate the remarks from Charlie. We're getting sometimes bogged down in the verbiage. And I appreciate her expressing her excitement. Gives me new hope about the <laughs> You see, I had the same kind of excitement about the Coalition of Essential Schools because I think you need to talk outside your district and you need to have seminars, you need to have some kind of interaction. And we just can't become isolated because we're somehow sometimes duplicating and we also are becoming very stagnant in how we, how we deliver certain things. And, and it's very important that we communicate. And, and this is actually an easier because it's two towns at borders. Well, that's the idea. And? Um, I, I agree with, with what Charlie said, but I, I just have a couple of comments about the, the visioning report, and I appreciate your con comments, Connie, that you certainly can't get the flavor of this vast amount of time and uh, all the effort people put into this just from some bullets. But there, there are just a couple things that um, concern me reading through these, the list of past and present trends and probable future and all, and that is the, um, the bullets that say things like teaching now more focused on thinking more than rote learning, diminishing need, use of rote skills and learning, technology replaces rote skills, trend toward process emphasis, less emphasis on content. And my only comment is that I really hope that we don't, while we, while we go for all the higher thinking skills and all that, I, I hope we don't lose track of the fact that the kids at the lower levels just need that basic What's almost thought of as a dirty, you know, rote learning is thought to be almost, a, it's almost a dirty word now to, to think of having to memorize things, to have to do multiplication tables, to have to learn phonics and that kind of thing. And I think we, we make a real mistake if, if we don't give the kids those, those very basic building blocks on which to do all this great thinking. Um, you know, too often I, I see my own kids and other kids still counting things on their fingers in middle school. And high school, you go into the supermarket. If the computers go down, the clerks are sometimes literally hysterical because they can't estimate. Um, and I, I just want to make sure that while we do all these great hands-on things and you know all this exciting learning things, that we don't forget that these kids still need to have some basic facts on which to, to build the rest of it. And that's one thing that I think is just um, missing in a lot of what we do is just that attention to the beginning detail. So, 
It's my editorial comment. Charlie. And having been there and having been in, in a couple of different types of groups, I think one of the central features, and I think even teachers beginning to buy into it from, from the teachers that were there, are the role of a teacher. The teacher is more of a manager, facilitator, the use of technology to, to, you, to use as a way of, of people learning more rote skill development uh, instead of a teacher standing there over a student doing the, the continual rote kind of exercise but utilizing technology as a way of, of being able to spread the teacher to, to work with more students and still still dwell on the basics and make sure that they really have a basic understanding and have, have, have enough practice by using technology as a way of practicing. As long as technology is, is, is used as a way of practicing, that's fine. But I still think things like with the use of calculators and things like that, kids still need to be able to, and that is one thing I saw in this math class, the kids at the high school when I was there last week, very quick to pick up that calculator and the teacher saying, put down the calculator. But I just, you know, I just don't want to lose, you know, we still have to put pen to paper and sometimes just do the grunt work. But you could do that, you, know? you could do that in, a, in a software program where they actually have to. Right, but we're a long way from being able to do that, you know, realistically um, with the number of machines we have and the teacher. You know, I just don't want to lose track of those basic hmm. skills while we get real excited about them. And you're also looking long stuff. term. This is not right. that's going no, to happen. I know now. that. I just, it's just my editorial comment <laughs> for tonight. Well, it's the kind of thing that comes up all the time. And actually, those bullets, believe me, do not capture the flavor of some of the discussions that are going on exactly like that. Hmm. I think the one thing that I was most impressed about was the collegiality between communities, and we all seem to have the same kind of problems, the same kind of curriculum problems, and to get people together to talk about them. So it's not an isolated community trying to solve a problem because we aren't alone out there. You know, we may think that we are a distinct community, but we aren't. You know, we, there are other communities that have the same kind of problems, maybe more diversified in their population, but they have the same kind of problems. Okay. Thanks. Moving on, the um, update on the construction project. Uh, I did include in your packet a, a notice of an incident that occurred last week, um, which we have addressed. But it was uh, one of the issues that we have to keep on the front burner as we finish up on, the, on this project is that we are occupying the building and we're trying to keep people out of any area where there might be some uh, work going on, particularly overhead work, um, and the, as I outlined here, um, there's a small piece of the parapet that was being worked on, and it just, it, nothing actually happened, but, it, and being proactive, what we needed to do, we thought, was to make sure that there was nobody in that area of the building, so we moved the kids out. I want to compliment the staff and the kids for uh, having a very productive day and handling it well. But in light of that, I have um, discussed with the architects and the uh, construction people, uh, absolutely none of that work can go on. So it does drag on. In other words, it's, that scaffold is still up there. It wouldn't be up there if I had permitted it to go on uh, during after school hours. But I just decided that there was no point in replicating that kind of issue. So I've made that decision. Um, I will say more about that when we get down to school building committee and where we are. Um, essentially, um, we are moving along with things like punch list items as well as painting and um, so is there anything you want to call to anybody's attention? Um, the signage is underway um, for the new buildings. It, um, we're just doing some last minute um, Looking over the details in that order, hopefully we'll go to the architect tomorrow. And um, I'm not sure it will be completed by December 10th, but certainly that's our goal. Um, as you said, the punch list items are um, sort of ongoing, and we're making every effort to wind up um, the painting. Um, the locker rooms will be complete at the middle school um, by um, the Monday after Thanksgiving. 
the new gym floor at the middle school is complete. In fact, students started using it on Monday, and um, it looks beautiful, so that was successful. Um, and other than that, we're just sort of plugging away at those punch list items. Yeah. I think it's important to point out to people that the, uh, this project was originally a two-year project. It's been a year and a half, and we have full use of the building. Uh, it's certainly a lot better than being out in portables or dealing with trying to tear down the D-wing and having piles of loose dirt out there and no parking lot. Uh, on the other hand, it does mean that uh, people have the feeling, because you're in a building, that the whole thing is finished. This is um, similar to, I had, my father used to be in the Navy years ago, and as a child growing up, I remember hearing things about a shakedown cruise. A shakedown cruise is when you launch the ship and you take it to sea to find out just exactly what some of your problems are, and they always have problems, and we have ours. But we are fixing them, and we are dealing with them, and they are, uh, for the most part, well within the bounds of what one would expect, given the size and complexity of the project. But um, it does get tedious at times. Any other questions? Charlie. Just a comment. The other night when I walked to the building committee meeting, and I parked in the new, the small staff parking lot between the two buildings, it just, there's a sense of pride of walking into nice facilities that are well lit, the grounds are well lit. It just, it was just, it makes you want to go into the schools. They're very inviting. And I think the changes just in lighting outside the high school is now making the high school more inviting. Also safer. And safer. Well, it's, it certainly doesn't come automatically or without, without a struggle. And I certainly want to thank all the people that are involved, which means all the staff, all the kids, all the parents have been involved, and particularly Sue Weatherby. And I don't know where we would be without her. Um, moving on, focus groups. We've had, uh, let's see, three parent groups, two teacher groups. We have two student groups lined up for next Tuesday, I think, Rick, if I remember correctly. The student groups are next Tuesday. Uh, and, and I have asked the administrators, uh, we're, we'll be scheduling a group. I guess I'm the one who can't be part of any of the groups because I'm sort of out there by myself somewhere. Uh, but I will be very interested in helping to put together and comment on what the data looks like. And once again, if you, as a fifth member, would like to be, we can arrange that. If you would like to have a group, you can just let me know. I would see, from what little I have seen so far of the results of these, I would see this as an interesting ongoing process. You're going to see some, because each group is a role group, um, parent, teacher, student, and administrator, and if you do it, school board, you will see that, um, and I've just seen some preliminary indications of this, some very interesting ways of looking at a school. And as my experience as a superintendent has certainly taught me that whatever your role is, you're going to see the school in a different, through a different lens. And when you realize the complexity, you put all those lenses together, one issue, but four or five different ways of looking at it, and then you multiply that by all the individual personalities, needs, and so forth. Uh, no wonder it's a complex organization. Um, so I suspect what we will be doing is popping up a few, sort of collapsing a few themes and then going back and asking yourselves, how do we get a better view of this? So I think you'll find it sort of an unrolling issue, which is something we talked about last summer. Okay. Anne? Oops, sorry. I, I think the budget process this year will be very much part of that ongoing process. Yes. Um, we've, we've talked to the administrators so far, but I don't know if I'm jumping the gun, but Beth Currier and I are, gonna, are going to try to put together a, kind of an overview um, article on the budget um, for the Cape Courier for the January issue, just basically laying out what our budget is this year, where the money goes, just a brief overview of you know, what programs are in each school very brief, and then in some way asking for people to give us feedback back. And hopefully this will also help people, you know, get interested about the budget process and some of the issues that, that will be discussed and give people more, more of the information they say they want. So I hope once they get it, we will hear. <laughs> Which sort of leads into the next item. Um, sure. First grade uh, teacher parent meeting. We have had a meeting with 22 parents, two teachers, three school board members, two administrators, and myself. 
uh, because we had some questions about the size of the first grade classrooms. We did discuss that in August. Uh, we had discussed it at the budget meeting. I think in summary what I would point out um, is that we have a board policy that talks about 20 as a ballpark figure for first grade um, with the rest of the policy making it clear that that's not an absolute ceiling that one or two on either side, 18 to 22, is um, normally considered uh, a ballpark figure. What we discovered as we examined this problem is that we've had sort of a paper policy and then we've had kind of for a variety of reasons, all of them explainable, uh, a de facto class size of somewhat less than 20. Um, this has created a situation where there are uh, understandable confusions perhaps in parents' minds. Well, you know, last year's class was 18 or 17. Well, why, how come isn't that your class size? Uh, so we do need to make sure that people understand what the policy is. And also uh, in our conversations around this issue, we have talked with uh, teachers about what um, how they would understand their difficulties, what their frustrations are, and what can be done about it. Um, as far as this year is concerned, uh, we have sort of looked at a number of things, which would include adding some hours of teacher, uh, teacher assistant, or what are now called educational technician time to, um, to help those teachers that don't already have some of that support. Uh, but I'm sure that this is an issue that will be brought up again, probably through the budget process. And okay. Next item, just a very quick reminder, we did go to the MSMA conference. Charlie and I presented on the negotiations about last year's negotiations. We had some interesting questions asked of us, and we did include in your packet the handout that we had. We were slated to have a teacher to go with us, but it happened to be parent conference time, and I just want people to know that our teachers made that a high priority, and I certainly would have felt like I was on shaky grounds as a superintendent to say, no, you got to go to the school board conference. So, uh, But they did give us a handout, and we were able to share. And, um, okay. Right. And finally, uh, the open house, which I've already mentioned, that is a celebration <laughs> open house for Pine Cove and Middle School, and we will be doing everything we can to make sure people in the community know about that, and uh, we'll at least stop by and go through. Very good. And those are my items. Great. The next item on the agenda is school board subcommittees and reports, and the first one is finance subcommittee. Charlie? Uh, we met this evening at 6.30 in the Chamber's conference room. We signed the warrants, reviewed the appropriations report, and we'll vote later on accept, accepting adjustments to salary accounts. Um, we were informed that the 96-97 budget worksheet books have been distributed to the buildings. Um, we reviewed the 99, 1995 audit, which was very favorable. Um, we reviewed the school lunch income statement, and for the first time in a long time, we actually are showing a gain, a positive balance. Hopefully our new facility, the emerging of the two kitchens, uh, increased lunch participation, many, many factors are going into a, a much more efficient organization. Um, we reviewed the middle school ball field repairs. The middle school lost broken items as, of, as a result of the uh, transitional move. Uh, there will be a payphone installed in the middle school in the cafetorium. ASAP. Actually there. <laughs> it's actually the there. Yeah. <clears throat> um, we also reviewed some some additional expenses which we which have come out of the um, the building project because essentially the building project as you will learn when that particular um, committee is reports we are essentially at a, at a zero balance. And we still have a couple of, of issues that need to be taken, dealt with, and we feel as a board that we can handle those through our own budget. One of those is ADA signage, and the other is a repair of the Area A 1952 section roof. Um, so those will, those will proceed on. Uh, we talked about um, 
a rental agreement between the Cape Elizabeth Middle School and Leslie College for monthly use for a computer lab, one of our computer labs for a master's program. We have three teachers in our system who are in that master's program, and we gave approval to that. Um, I would move that we move um, funds from salary accounts 8700, 8800, 8900, and, um, and distribute those to the proper salary accounts. Is there a second? Second. Keith, any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Charlie, anything else? That's the end of my report. Um, school building committee is next. Um, I'm going to let Ann report. I just wanted to comment that the roof you mentioned is actually a replacement of that roof, not just repairs. We found it was not repairable, um, and that's why it has to be replaced. And um, just so the public knows, only about 60% of the roofs were completely replaced and new with the building project. Um, so there are going to be ongoing roof issues. And we do have a report on that from the architect. Ann, go ahead. I want the building committee. Most yeah, of the can. building committee meeting has already been covered <laughs> in all these other discussions. Um, the last building committee meeting was on November 9th. Um, we did get an update on our contingency. We have about $33,000 left in the contingency, which everyone agreed should probably stay where it is in case we have any more critical um, issues we need to resolve. Um, as has already been stated, there were several issues um, that, we, that we discussed um, that we decided to either you know, send to the schools to look at or decided not to look at it at all right now, including the signage, which is being taken care of right now. Uh, the bleacher replacement, has that been discussed yet? We haven't really discussed it. Um, it, it had uh, turned out that the bleachers in the middle school gym um, are not up to code anymore and need to be replaced. Um, we're, we're thinking of replacing just one side of the gym instead of the two sides that, that, that currently have bleachers. Um, but the, the cost for that is about $39,000. And the, since the building uh, contingency can't handle it, um, obviously it's not coming from there. And um, we discuss it in the Finance Committee and have decided to defer that expense, um, not, not deal with it this year, just remove the old bleachers um, for this year. Um, we also discussed a sound system in the cafetorium and um, decided we couldn't, couldn't do that either right now. Um, we've already talked about the area roof, um, and we um, also deferred the special ed casework, um, casework for some of the special ed rooms for now. And um, there was also a request for uh, locks for the casework in the science room so that um, expensive equipment and chemicals and such could be locked up, and that, that money will come out of our current budget. Um, we also discussed, obviously, the issue that's, that was already mentioned about the parapet and the, and the various punch list items and, you know, encouraging everybody that we're still in the middle of this process and it will be done soon and hopefully everything will, will come out smoothly. Um, am I forgetting anything else? So many things were discussed before. I have one thing to add that um, just to further explain the bleachers, that we had investigated, or Scott had investigated, having those older bleachers brought up to code, but that company um, that originally made those bleachers is no longer in existence, and one bleacher company will not um, touch another bleacher. Uh, so we had to replace the whole system, and that's why we were buying new. And that they are almost 40 years old. Mm -hmm. Right. They don't need any codes whatsoever. Right. Mm. And aside from that, our next meeting is on December 7th, and I don't believe the, the location place was has not been um, determined as of yet. Are there any other questions, Connie, comments? I would just want to comment for the public that um, it is really important to stress that the contingency was a large contingency, and it has been uh, largely spent on investigating and repairing very structural issues. Uh, we certainly have not been able to do, uh, as per the list that you just heard, 
uh, all the finished kinds of things that we'd like to have done. What we have tried to satisfy is the sense that the shell of the building, the framework of the building, the essential structural issues have been thoroughly investigated and repaired. Um, when you mentioned the roof, uh, there was a large and extensive roof project um, before I was here, so it would have been six or seven years ago. Um, and some of those roofs, which usually carry a 10-year warranty, um, for a variety of reasons have not worn as well as they might have. We've actually replaced a couple of them, and we have, in fact, uh, patched, uh, successfully patched another piece um, and done some necessary repairs on others. But we've also added pieces that have been thoroughly replaced, including the one we just mentioned tonight. Um, I realize that, that the money for this project sounds so extensive uh, to people who are not involved with these things, you think, well, can't you do everything with that sum of money? No. And the building committee has been rigorous in keeping to its initial guidelines of simplicity, bare bones, no frills, uh, but good quality, and things that we hope um, when the whole thing is finished will, in fact, last. But we are also drawing up maintenance schedules as well as we have the roof schedule and a great deal of what has to be ongoing is that through the school boards and the business office that we will have a handle on uh, each year in the budget time this is what has to happen and the community I hope will be supportive of keeping those things going rather than hoping that you know the, these needs have to be balanced every year and the price you pay for letting maintenance go is pretty obvious. Uh, just in passing, also, I think we mentioned in the Finance Subcommittee, I do thank um, Scott Poulin, who is, after two years of being our business manager, has managed to bring us through a most recent audit with compliments from the town council, as well as cleaning up and straightening out a lot of our processes that uh, will be ongoing in the business office. So I see some real improvement in the way we manage our business, and I hope that that will be helpful in the future. Yeah, I want to thank you, Scott, also. You've done a wonderful job. Thank you. Uh, next item is the um, Technology Committee, and Keith is going to report. The Technology Committee has met twice since our last board meeting, once on October 16th and once uh, just yesterday on the 13th. Uh, we're discussing several different areas uh, in these meetings, uh, one of which is the uh, Gary Lenoy has set up the Cape Net bulletin board system, which is our electronic access through the schools. So that's, that's one thing that's going on. Uh, coming up on, on January 2nd is a, is a full day, in-service day, that's devoted entirely to technology, and there'll be a variety of different uh, mini courses and so forth that the staff will be attending. Uh, we're, we're looking at a software policy. Uh, which there'll be information forwarded over to the policy subcommittee uh, soon. <laughs> uh, there, there's an ongoing maintenance of the, uh, of the equipment that, that's happening now. We're having uh, regularly scheduled visits by a, by a maintenance technician. The next meeting is scheduled for December 4th at 2.30. And uh, we're getting ready for the budget season uh, for the technology committee, so we're gonna first be revisiting the technology plan and, and uh, nailing down where we're currently at and then relating that to budget and how we're going to present the technology budget for next year. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Thanks, Keith. Uh, policy subcommittee, Ann. Well, everybody got um, a memo about our last meeting, which was held on October 25th, and we went over um, quite a few policies. Unfortunately, we don't have much to show for it here tonight, but just wait till December. You're going to be sorry. We're going to have so many policies. Um, we did go over that uh, bus driver drug and alcohol use policy again. Since then, we've had, you know, there have been numerous changes by the attorneys. It's still really not in, in good shape um, for us to look at, so we will have that again in December. Um, at, for hopefully for this for the second and final reading so we can have that in place in January when we're supposed to. Um, we reviewed um, some policies from the high school on um, on high school placement 
um, and honors recognition of early graduates, and also on high school course credit prior to grade nine. Um, those policies are still in draft form, and we'll be bringing them to the next meeting with some more explanation of what, what's, what's going on with those. Um, the addendum to facilities use policy uh, regarding funerals um, in the school buildings that we talked about last time, um, we are not bringing back for a second reading because um, our council has advised us that it would be best not to have a policy like that. So it'll just be placed in the central um, policy book for historical information if the subject comes up again. Um, we sent to the middle school and high school um, administrators uh, the, the revised weapons in schools um, policy um, from our council and um, some sample locker search policies and we will be discussing those with the administrators and uh, Jack Nichols, the community liaison officer at our next meeting and um, we're still, you know, kind of wrestling with the school board ethics and time on task scheduling for instruction policies. Um, the only policy we're going to have tonight for second reading is the evaluation of support staff. So our next meeting is November 30th from 8.30 to 10.30, and everybody is welcome to attend. Thank you, Anne. Any other questions, comments? Uh, research Strand Committee. I'm not sure who's reporting. Well, I will. Uh, will. We had our third meeting today. Um, I think this is really a very fruitful committee and it's um, we met today with Jim Curry some of you of course in fact probably all of you remember him reporting to the board last spring uh, showing you some teacher work and so forth um, his work and his uh, the foundation that at least uh, teachers at the middle school and at Pond Cove have received uh, in this area is going to be extremely helpful as we try to uh, produce a document that's k-12 on what are the expectations um, and in terms of student work as well as suggested uh, ways to reach that kind of expectation for teachers. Um, in essence, what we're looking at is uh, what, if you take, well, let's take doctoral level work. If you start at that level of research, uh, sophisticated level of research, what are the kinds of habits of mind and specific skills that one needs to build up over time in order to do that kind of work? And this does not certainly mean just a a written doctoral thesis. It means, for instance, the kind of inquiry that goes on in the work labs or at the hospital or in a variety of other things. So there is an excellent vehicle for teaching critical skills, thinking skills, uh, as well as just probing what's the meaning of, of respectable evidence. Um, we have some material uh, to, to pull together and take to the staff development committee to, because we think this is going to be something that we hope to uh, feature in, in one of our workshops coming up this year. Um, and I think that's really all I need to say about this tonight, but I really, I really have a good time on this committee. Any questions? Comments? Uh, art curriculum report. Carla or Keith? Yeah. Um, we had a meeting um, on November 1 in the middle school art room. Um, which is a very nice, large, bright room, by the way. It's a, it's a nice room with a nice big window. Um, it's a really good group. It's a good cross-section. We had representation from the arts from all three buildings, as well as some administrators and some parents. And this is still kind of in the early stages, so it was still a kind of where are we, what are we doing meeting. Um, we had a video that we saw that was a general arts in the, um, it was really geared towards elementary school and it was really geared towards visual arts, but it was a nice intro. And um, we decided that what we need to do for the next meeting to get started, um, we kind of went around and everyone shared their vision of what the group was all about. And one of the immediate tasks that we're going to do is get a good handle on exactly what exists in the curriculum, the arts curriculum now in all three buildings, K through 12. And the teachers, the arts teachers, were supposed to come to the next meeting with some fairly specific um, curriculum information so we can get a good handle on exactly what we have in place now. And um, 
kind of at the same time as being that specific, we're also going to work very hard at beginning the five-year plan, um, the goals and the specific mission and timeline for the group. Um, Connie or Keith has anything to add to that? No, I think that covers it. The next meeting is going to be Monday, December 11th at 4 o'clock, again in the middle school art room for anyone who's interested in that. Great. Thank you, Carla. Any questions? Thanks. Um, the last is the Staff Development Committee, which I am happy to um, give a short summary of. We have been meeting to plan the two additional teacher days um, from, with input from all of the faculty. We chose um, technology as the subject for the January 2nd day and curriculum K-12 for the February 16th day. Um, we focused our last meeting on the technology day, the January 2nd, and Gary Lenoy came to, as the technology um, committee rep, to give us an idea of what is doable and feasible and how our ideas mesh with the input we got from teachers. And we came up with a tentative schedule for the day, which involves um, some all group time and a lot of sort of mini courses that teachers will pre-select which ones they will go to. Um, most of them will be taught, actually all of them will be taught by in-house people. Um, and we still have some work to be done, but I think the day is well underway to being planned. Um, we will then begin focusing on the February 16th day and planning that. Uh, we meet again on November 20th at 3.15 um, here in the town hall conference room. Beth, I just have in. one um, one comment. I I just realized that I don't think that the uh, that board members not on this committee did not get the list of ideas generated by the teachers uh, at the last workshop day. I don't know if they did. They? I don't know. Um, okay. The the list of um, of professional development list. time. You know that list I gave you of from all those all those sheets from the workshop mm. listing all the ideas they had. Did you get that? I, with the first report that we got. No, this was something more recent. One. Okay. There's one that Ann compiled that's about yeah. three pages long that... Um, that has all the teachers' ideas in order of <laughs> importance with all the subgroups. And I, I think the board might just like yeah. to see the ideas that were generate, generated. Um, okay. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that you can think of, Ann, from that committee? And next item is unfinished business policy second reading. The policy we have for second reading is GDO, support staff evaluation. The only change um, from the last time we saw this was something that um, actually didn't happen. <laughs> Title. title. <laughs> just the title. It's just what? Just the title. No, there was one. No, other. there was. It was supposed to be in the um, in the body itself, but I just noticed it, that it's not in there. In the second in the second line, it, um, second sentence, it should say the primary purpose of support staff personnel evaluation. Just as a just as a clarification. Okay. So let's all just write it in, and that's what we're. <laughs> that's what it's going to be. <laughs> You'll get new ones in a minute. Oh, any? A second? Is, is there a motion? motion? Do you make? Well, I, I didn't make a motion <laughs> yet. I was waiting for everybody to finish. <laughs> I would entertain a motion. Okay, I move. I move. I move that we accept the uh, file GDO support staff evaluation. Is there a second? That's definitely a second. I've been working for this for five I years. <laughs> <laughs> any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you, Ann. Uh, new business. Nominations for athletic coaching positions for fall 95-96. OK, well, we actually on um, one sheet, because you don't have a whole lot, let's just go through all of the athletic key positions and then also the co-curricular sure. positions. 
Uh, so the list is seventh and eighth grade math team, Tom Wilbur, freshman advisor, Jeff Rosenblum, high school math team, Kurt McCandless, student service program advisor, Skip Crosby, high school yearbook, Nautilus, Betsy Nelson, visual arts club, Mary Hart, uh, speech, Sarah Franklin, debate extemporaneous, Dwight Ely, de debate Lincoln Douglas, Nancy Ziegler, debate coordinator, Sarah Franklin and Dwight Ely, and debate policy, Dwight Ely. You may recall that last June we appointed Sarah Franklin and Dwight Ely as co-directors of the speech and debate program and said we would come back with specific delineations of which pieces people were doing. So that's really a follow-up to what, what we had earlier. Athletic fee positions for an uh, 95 96 school year, seventh grade boys basketball, Brian Bickford, eighth grade boys basketball, Jerry McQueenie, and seventh and eighth grade boys B basketball, Creed Ray. And you do have some notes in the back on your sports people. Are there questions? Ann? Uh, j just a comment. Again, um, the basketball uh, teams have already been playing and practicing and everything. I just wonder if there's any way to get these in a more timely manner. Um, there's no one here who can <laughs> answer that specifically. It's just kind of a plea that could we please, please if possible, approve these people before they actually start working. That would be great. We will try. Can I respond to that? I think yeah. in fairness, the, uh, at the, at, by the October meeting, the coaches had not been determined. And no, I, no, I yeah. understand that, because but somehow I think we have a time timeliness yeah. issue. This I don't one know season starts, so I mean, no other winter sports season starts. Um, it's either girls basketball right. or at the junior high or boys basketball yeah. at the middle school. I'm sorry. So that's the, the dilemmas. If we had those people on, on board in on October, we would have been able to present that. Yeah, I, ju I, I don't know what the process is for going out and looking for these people, but I guess I would like it to be moved up if it can, just so that we have them. I know contractually it's split t twice a year now. It used to be they used to have to these by April right. for the year, and then contractually we changed it so that so that fall I think fall sports had to be June would to, to be June, and winter sports winter and spring had to be by October. But, so yeah. But I know that these 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 uh, middle school ones were posted for quite a while, so I know they weren't. No, I know. I'm just thinking meeting. maybe we need to advertise a little earlier. That's it. Any other questions? Is there a motion? I already put my list. In. Somebody, please, oh. Charlie. <laughs> I move acceptance of the co-curricular positions for the school year 95-96 and the athletic fee positions for 95-96 as read by the superintendent. Second. Second, Gail. Any more discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. I'd like to announce the finance subcommittee meeting will be Tuesday, December 12th at 6.30, followed by the regular school board meeting. The School Board Community Services Workshop will be Tuesday, November 28th at 7 p.m. We will also be discussing the athletic issues that we brought up tonight. It will be in the Middle School Teacher Resource Room, which is at the library, the Middle School Library. And the School Board Policy Subcommittee meeting will be Thursday, November 30th at 8.30. And the community-wide celebration will remind you again is Sunday, December 10th from 2 to 5. Is there a motion to adjourn? I have a question uh, yeah. about the, the school board community services workshop. Is that room really going to be big enough? It's next to the library, I think. It, yeah, if well, it's not, I we having can Well, been, having been at a technology meeting, it, yeah. you get a number of people in there, it's going to be very crowded. Sue Weatherby suggested this room, but I'm sure we could move into the media center. I because mean, our library. October technology meeting was in that middle school um, conference room and, or resource room, and it was. Tight. With the number of people that were there, it was tight. And if you have do have parents or or community, yeah, I think it's going to be very tight. I'm sure we can move right out into the library, library. if we have a problem. I see more right the there. use of the library versus yeah. that room. Sue was anxious to use this room because she likes it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we ought to um, advertise that workshop in some way because we will. 
the community services issues are important and so are the athletic yeah. issues and they may have a big impact on people and, and if we can get feedback from people at this point I think it'll make our job in the spring a lot easier yes I think we do we so. should how are we going to do that well uh, they're all picked up and put into the paper and all of the notices mm -hmm. are posted in the regular places that doesn't mean however people pay attention right. to it um, sign outside there's a sign out. We could, you or you could put it on the uh, maybe on the bulletin board out there. Yeah, yeah the community bulletin board. Yeah. You know. Because I mean, the, yeah. this. What about I would the rather cable hear it now. I would rather too. hear what. Yeah, let's do that. It's on it. Yeah. Is it now? Yeah. Okay. Good. Whoops. That. Oh, I know the deadline for the middle school newsletter is Monday. So there's time to put something in that. It, it doesn't come out again until after December first. I already looked into that for something else. Oh. Do you suppose that was a tree outside? <laughs> Which one of our cars is parked under? It? <laughs> it's, it's on the calendar for the next issue of the Courier. Also, it's already on the calendar. Yeah, the sign at the fire station might, might be the, the one piece that we don't do routinely. As long like as it's root, so that it's worded so people understand it's uh, something important. Well, I think if it's, if it's highlighted as a sports, Sports workshop or sports budget or workshop. something yeah. that will get people's attention yeah. well, more probably this. than some of the academics. Do you want to yeah. continue <laughs> sports? That would do it. Which is not the issue, by the way. Let's just say that. Right now. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. We are but it is a money issue. I mean, there will be money discussions. Resources, yes. Resources. How we're going to pick and choose? We can't have it all. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? We are adjourned. Yeah, I did. Most class sizes must be pretty big. We can't do that. I'll have to put um, it on the board. I think that's what's going to come out of the whole process. I wonder if it's like something that's special. There's some water pouring in on the second of the wheel or something. I mean, that was well, really. It seemed like it was. I've read it from below that.